booyah, we can uh, jump into this. I'll tell you the rest of the story later. That was just filler. This is, you know, what has, what has a business done for me? I have to give you some perspective and let you know what went down way back in the day. One of the things that happened, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell this story and it's because it's really, really brief. It's when I first came on YouTube and everyone was like, oh God, he didn't get out the storage jokes of business because he wanted to be a writer. No, 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 no. He can't write. He can't do this. It's lies. It's sacrilege. It's bullshit. All of this stuff that was going on and on. Now, I often say that many people are functionally ignorant or ignorant because if you took my name, which was on the YouTube channel and did a simple Google search, you would have noticed that this page exists and it's copyrighted 1999, 2000. You, you can go to the Wayback Machine and see when this actually came. And it's just funny that many people will make claims and then assign someone's character with no research, none. And that's just uh, what I say, you know, a sign of an incompetent mind that you're making complete decisions on not even some of the facts, but none of the facts. But it's uh, really, really interesting. But this is where I got started. Uh, 1999, that was a watershed pivotal year for me because it was the last time I got laid off. The third time, I couldn't take it anymore. And I begin to move forward. I begin to really, really look at life from a different perspective. I think for a long time I was asleep. And I mean, just to tell you how old this is, who still has a yahoo.com email address? That was my, that wasn't my first internet email address. Because back, you know, when you had limits, when you couldn't, you didn't have these huge data storage files. I think, you know, with your Gmail account, you have 15 gigabytes now. I mean, they used to shut your stuff down at like two megabytes. So you had to clean out your box. You, you're bumping up into storage and uh, storage issues because typically when you start selling online, you, you start getting all these emails. You see this stuff. Let's see who is in the house. Louis the sellers in the house. MK LaCour, I think uh, I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Young Cayman and Isaiah, welcome all. Because this will be recorded and everyone can see it later. But that was a really interesting time. And what I learned was I wanted to write. I, I had this burning passion and desire. But I didn't have the discipline nor the direction to put it all together. That was my weakness. You know, uh, the stories, the ideals, that wasn't the problem. It was the discipline and putting it all together. And this, I think, was more than just losing a job and a kick in the ass. This pretty much set my life on fire last time I got laid off. I remember sitting in the office it was in Midtown. It was in Peachtree Center. I remember that whole day. And uh, we got more people in the house. We've got Chris Gimma. Every, you know, he calls himself this guy. I remember that day with a, an astounding clarity. I can even tell you what I had on. Black pants, black shoes, uh, Argyle socks, and a blue button-down shirt. Never forget it. So I'm sitting there. Listening to this, in my mind, did something that it didn't do for. I mean, it started to really activate. I didn't go, "Whoa, it's me!" and I didn't start cussing. I was just like, "Okay, I got to come up with a plan," and that's what happened. Now, many people will disagree with this, but life is a game, and points are real. When you take your life so seriously that you can't even enjoy a simple moment because you are worried about something that happened two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, you essentially put your life on hold. You put your life on hold. 
I used to be one of those people that took life as something deathly serious. Each moment laced with bone tingling purpose. I'm so serious. I'm working on building this life. I was full of shit. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, like most people. And I was winging it. There was no plan. There was no purpose. I didn't really understand. The game is, the game of life is really, really simple. It is not what happens to you, it's how you play. Give you an example. With uh, me getting the boot and getting fired. I changed my strategy. The game was still the same. I went there, they said, we don't want you anymore. You need to leave. But what, what really changed was my strategy and how I, I decided to <clears throat> excuse me, embrace the game. I, told, I took a totally different mindset and I was able to accomplish in six weeks what I couldn't do for in like two and a half years. And the reason I put this little kid here with the look on his face and uh, the holding the gun is many of us are operating on this. They told me I could be anything I wanted. And when it doesn't happen, you're pissed off. You are ready to kick ass. It's like, wait a minute. Someone told me that I could do this. They told me that, hey, this was going to be possible, that I would be able to make this stuff happen, that I would be magnificent with my desires. The problem is, it isn't the phrase that they told me I could be anything I wanted. The problem is, you didn't get the tools to be anything that you wanted. It's one thing to tell a kid that. It's another thing to enable that child with the insight, the knowledge, and the wisdom where they can pull it off. And what happens is people's like, hey, you should, you're in the land of the free, of opportunity. You are amazing and you should do all these wonderful things. But, oh, I am not going to give you the instructions. I am going to hold the textbook back and I'm just going to watch you sit there and make a fool of yourself. Whereas if you take someone that comes from another country, they have habits, customs, and certain characteristics in their societies that when they bring that over here, they're successful because they already have a system in place. They already know why they're working. It may be for family reasons, religious reasons. There's a system. There's a certain protocol. If you've ever traveled, have you ever noticed that regardless of how poor people may be around the world, they're very polite. They have a sense of dignity because dignity has nothing to do with whether you have money or not. It's a character thing. And that's one of the reasons I think immigrants come here. You have to look at the character of someone who's going to leave home, go all the way across the ocean and go to this foreign land and start from scratch. That's a pretty ballsy move. That's that's a, that's a lot of courage. And, it, and that's one of the reasons I think so many of them do well is because they are already enabled with certain character attributes that will allow them to be successful. That will allow them to be very, very successful. So it is a game. And if you start looking at how you play versus, oh, shit, I got laid off. Fuck the world. The world's unfair. I can't take it. You know what? And you go into a bar and you take your last few shillings and you talk there and you commiserate with other people that life is literally kicking them in the ass. How far does that get you? Seriously, how far does that get you? When you learn to play the game the way that's intended by being accountable, things will change. Big, big decisions also came. Because I often say this and people think it's wrong. Having a business is going to make a man or a woman out of you. It's going to make you grow up. It's going to make you look at things in a way that you never looked at them before. It's scary, but you become more of a realist. And that's why when you would see business owners in the natural, they're complaining about customers and stuff. They're, they're dealing with issues that you until recently as an employee didn't really have to deal with seriously 
for a long time, if you went to work, did what you needed to do, showed up, you didn't even have to work that hard. You didn't even have to really meet expectations. As long as you didn't do enough stuff to get fired, your job made money. And then the world changed. <laughs> <laughs> where accountability and being capable and all that other stuff became very, very real. Now, when I stumbled into the first foray of the hustler mindset, I took the red pill and I looked at my life from very bleak, stark terms. I became very real with myself and the analysis was really simple. Dude, your life is fucked up. It is fucked up. And the reason that your life is fucked up is because you made some very poor choices and you didn't do it once. You didn't do it twice. It was a systematic cascade of poor choices that stacked upon stacked upon each other that the result was inevitable. Everything was just going to blow apart. It was going to be a cataclysmic blow up. And that's what happened because decisions that were made years earlier. And that's one of the themes about starting your business. It forces you to think about the present and it also forces you to think about the future in ways you have to be accountable. Because, you know, give you an example, like the one of the things that happens with the Internal Revenue Service, they're always changing stuff. So if you know, and usually they'll put down like, hey, you'll be able to do this this year and you can't do this this year. If you are going to say buy some heavy equipment and, you know, I'm just pulling numbers out of here because I didn't look at it. But there's a say you can do to 250,000 in capital investments this year. But, you know, next year you can only do 25. Knowing that that's going to be a critical part of your business instead of buying the stuff next year when you couldn't write it off. You buy it this year. It's things like that that just force you to look at life totally, totally different. And the big, big decision that comes from owning a business is. The choice to be congruent in thought and beliefs is a choice. It's a choice. It doesn't happen. It's a choice. And once you make that choice and where you you start walking the walk, walking the talk, however it's said, when you become congruent, when your thoughts and your deeds are mirrors of each other, you'll see some amazing things. And this is what happens when you start to build a successful business. If you continue to talk a good game, but you don't play a good game, you're going to get the results of not playing a good game, which is a big L, the big L, the big loss. That's what will happen. So when you take the red pill and you look at this stuff and you really, really think about your life, it forces you to mature and it forces you to grow up. There's a lot of stress starting a business. I'm not going to give you the, well, it's going to be really easy. And no, it's, it may be one of the hardest things you've ever done in your life. It could be one of the most important steps that you make for kids you don't even have yet. It's a very, very important thing to me because I look at where I used to be in life mentally and having a business really really pushed me out of all that stuff it forced me it pulled me out of the weeds there's this saying that's funny and it, it's somewhat racist but i'm going to talk about it anyway it says that when a black man gets money he becomes a republican i will reframe that as when a black man gets money he realizes how the real world works it's a different ball game. Uh, I don't know the stats and I'm not going to quote them, but a significant number of people in this country are on social assistance. A very high number. When that disappears and they have to, by hook, crook, or whatever, make it, that's when the unfairness doctrine protests will come because I heard this expression years ago and I think it's very, very relevant to this conversation. Luxuries, once tasted, become necessities. So once you get someone on the titty, even with the titty not being good for them, it's very hard to get them off the titty. It's damn near impossible to get them off the titty. 
and that's one of the reasons I did my eBay Amazon video because like I said Amazon's a great company yeah everyone knows how I feel about Amazon eBay but Amazon's a great company and it isn't that Amazon is that bad it's just once you get snookered in it's going to be very hard to decouple yourself from that so if you never really get into it or you only use it as a side channel versus the main thing then life can be lovely Another thing having my own business did for me, it, it for the first time in my life, it made me the boss of me. Initially, <laughs> this was very unsettling. When you are not used to being in charge of you, it's a transition. My uh, conversation with the lady this morning at the uh, lunch counter, she got laid off, but she had some clients that wanted her to do some work. A pretty good fee. I mean, seriously, our, the fee that she and her partner would get for this is significantly more than the average income. And she's still a little hesitant. And I told her what she was going to do. It's like, you're going to get a job and you're going to do a side thing. And she's like, I'll let you know when I figure out. I said, OK, because she's really scared about doing her own thing. And also in her industry, there is, uh, I guess, some classism. Because if you're such and such agency, then you can command this rate. And if you're a free wrestler, you can command this rate. So there's definitely some class issues going on because, you know, she's working with the fancy Fortune 500 companies. And I don't think she wants to let that go and go to other things. But I have a feeling she's going to make the right choice. But this this was really, really unsettling for me. It was just like. I had never had that kind of control over my life. You think that you're free. When you say when you're a kid, you're free of financial obligation because if you're lucky, you have parents that handle that for you. But you are very obligated. You're not really in control of nothing. You just exist. I remember the first time that I knew I was in charge of me and it, it, it came by really strange because I had to fire someone for the first time. When you've never fired anyone and you have to go through all of that stuff, all of that thinking, you just like, man, I got to get rid of this person. Then you start thinking like an employee. It's like, man, if I quit, if I fire them, they won't be able to pay their bills. You start to transition their problems into your life because you still have the employee mindset. You're thinking just like they are. And the real deal is if that employee found a better job paying five bucks an hour more for the same work. You're history. <laughs> you are history. You're gone. It, it's a weird, weird dynamic. And I was like, okay, this is not working out. This is detrimental to the business. This person has to go. And that's when I realized that I was in charge of me because I was also in charge of other people. It's a strange way to come to that realization because when you start hiring people, when you have to pay people, it's a very large responsibility. It's a very large responsibility. I remember when I had my assistant in 2012 and I let her go, I paid her everything I owed her before she left. It's like, bam, here you go. Here's your money. Here's cat. Because I don't know how many people have caused themselves so much harm because they wanted to hold on to a few shillings for an extra week or so. I mean, just, or not pay people at all. Just crazy stuff. Just crazy stuff. But when you get to that point of where you are looking out for the welfare of your company, the welfare of your employees, your contractors, whatever you may have, then you realize that you are the man or you're the woman and you're in charge of you. And the thing is, it shouldn't be such a big transition. And for some families, it's not because they groom their kids to be bosses and owners. But for most of us, no one prepares you for freedom, only mental slavery and conformity. You are deeply indoctrinated with staying inside the lines, coloring the right. I mean, it is just a cultural indoctrination from kindergarten up to college. I mean, for those who break free, it's a miracle that that many people who have broken free are breaking free. And to be really unvarnished, I was kicked out the matrix. That third time, I was kicked out. It's like, okay, 
they don't like me here. They keep unplugging me. I was having a good dream. Now I got to come out here outside the city. There's these big ass rats walking around. They're fighting. I just, you know, and it's like, you know what? I got a, I got a problem here. When I'm in the Matrix and it's all nice and lovely, it's cool. But every time I get kicked out, I have to come out here in this really, really scary world. So I got a choice. I need to learn how to operate in this scary world, the world of being a creator, an innovator, an entrepreneur, a business owner. Learn how to operate in that world. So next time they kick me out the Matrix, I'm good. And I never went back in. Because once I learned how to fight the dragons, how to kick the big cockroach's ass, you know, and just mix it up out here, it's like, hey, it's not so bad out here. <laughs> Actually, it's pretty bad in there. But until you are uncoupled, until you get out, no one, you, it's just really, really hard to understand. Very hard. Now, freedom has a price. It is a very, very big price. Charting your own course is scary. Being responsible for the good and bad of your life is terrifying. It's extremely high risk, but there's high rewards. The high cost of freedom, embarrassment, and failure keeps many people slaves to mediocrity. And that, that is the thing. That is what happens with people. Because you once you get comfortable, it becomes very hard to live in discomfort, which is will be the natural order of moving forward as a business owner. Now, I'm gonna give you my quick synopsis of why my first buy five businesses failed. Business number one failed, and I'll tell you about it. I was ahead of my time, and maybe not, because how many people actually go to photographers now? I would think photographers have been hit hard since everyone now has a high quality phone in their pocket, high, high quality camera in their phone in their pocket. But the first idea was uh, pictures with your pooch. It was going to take high class, glossy pictures of people with their animals. Spent like 1600 bucks on a camera. This was in the 80s. That was a lot of cabbage in the 80s. It was a lot of cabbage placed an ad in the Atlanta Journal Constitution. I think that was like $120 and didn't make a penny. Uh, number one, I didn't plan. I was just got my ideal and was just, and when I say plan, I'm not talking about in depth, you know, planning for 20 years, just a simple research validation procedure, which I didn't do. I just like, Hey, this is a great ideal. And I was off. So that's why that business fell. Uh, the second business was I was selling cheap shit out of a catalog. <laughs> And actually, I was selling some of that stuff. I didn't understand that the way that that game worked was it was not working for me. The catalog company didn't really care if we sold a lot of stuff to end users. The catalog company only cared that each month a number of people would sign up and buy stuff because they made their money off of us. Not <laughs> and, the, and the price of the stuff was entirely too expensive. You could shop locally and find similar things or better things for much cheaper. It was a total gank, but I learned how to sell. I was actually selling that stuff and delivering it to people's houses. <laughs> then there was the carpet cleaning business. Didn't have a van. Didn't prepare for that. And I actually cleaned some carpets. Was out of my car. Cleaned some carpets. Then since I was doing that, I was like, wait, cleaning company. Because I had bought into, hey, you can make this business and only work a few hours. And the thing is, at the time, the janitorial business was good. And you could make money. But uh, I'm not going to say the name of the company because they had like a 13% royalty. I didn't really understand how much impact that had. Then I... Um, had some other stuff off the books that wasn't under the royalty, but it just barely made money. Just barely made money. It was uh, it was just crazy. And I guess the, the fifth one would be the multi-level marketing. And I don't really 
throw rocks at multi-level marketing. It's been decades since I've touched this stuff, but I did that. I did. There was this new skin corporation. There was make. There was all kinds of things, and it, it, the pitch was the same. They would take you somewhere, and they would show you this wonderful life that you could have if only you would get five of your friends to come to your house every week. <laughs> and I bought it. I was like, yeah. I was writing down, I want to have this big house. I'm going to buy me a Saab. At the time, that Saab 900 Turbo, that was the car. That was like the Porsche of the day. That was the car. That was just a bad car to have. I was like, yeah, I'm getting five-speed turbo, writing all this stuff down. And not once did I think about the customer. Not once did I really think, was the product good or not? Didn't care. Was just trying to get money. And that's why I know about the whole get money hustler thing and why it doesn't really work. You can hustle your way up to a living. It's possible, but it won't be sustainable. It really won't be. It won't even be a long term hustle. It, it would just be, oh, this opportunity is good. Let me get on this. This opportunity is good. Let me get on this. And I went through the multi-level marketing thing. And that's why I consider it like a business for about a year. I went from this thing. I went to the pep rally. So we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This person's a diamond. And this person's executive level. And this per, And it went on and on and on. So pooch, catalog, carpet cleaning, janitorial service, multi-level marketing. Those were the first five businesses that... I didn't lose my ass because I didn't have a lot of money to invest. And at the time, you had to invest money and stuff. I didn't ma I lost. I didn't really lose nothing, really, when I think about it from a value standpoint. I had all now this is this went on for about four and a half years of me just losing and not doing well and failing and embarrassing myself and making mistakes. And that's why when I get these emails from some people who catch the videos and they're like, hey, Glendon, you know, I'm looking to make five to ten thousand dollars in 90 days. And I look at them and you haven't even spent the time getting the basic business knowledge. You, you haven't you haven't even gotten the basic business knowledge. And that's what happened. My four years of, you know, failing, falling on my face, not doing research because each business taught me a lesson. Like, let's go with the pet pooch thing. Identify a market before you start doing buying sixteen hundred dollar cameras. Find out if the market exists. <laughs> it wasn't so bad that I got started and I went for it. That wasn't a problem. This the market didn't exist. <laughs> I, I'll tell you something that's really ugly. I had a camera that I bought in a PX in Hawaii and it was a 35 millimeter because, you know, photography was really big. then. it was a nice hobby. I had this new sixteen hundred dollar Pentex with three different lenses and it did all this stuff. And I was so mad that I threw my first camera across the room when after spending close to two thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, I got a phone in the room in the barracks. That was some money. After I kept that for a while, but after spending two, that phone did not ring once. <laughs> it didn't ring once. I was in a funk for about a month because I, I bought the camera on credit. I got a Wolf camera card, and I had to pay that off. And I was paying money that I didn't have for this business that didn't matriculate. So I was like, okay, so I got to do something else. So I had a part-time job, and you know, I'll just give you the whole deal. I was in the military. I was working at Cobb General. wasn't supposed to have a part-time job, but you know, I was like, I did it because I needed one, and trying to start these businesses. And then the, the second business with the catalog. Sell people what they want. The catalog had all of this crap and knick-knacky stuff, and it was just, oh man, my head hurts as I think about it. I just think about it. And there were some really good people because there were some old ladies that worked in the lab and they bought stuff for me and they would get other stuff and they were very supportive and they kept me going. <laughs> that carpet cleaning thing, I'll tell you about the first job. I knew a friend of a friend who had a carpet that needed to be cleaned. Now, the problem is 
the carpet was in this house that was in the hood and the house only had one outlet that worked and only a few lights it was like something out of a horror movie but I said I was going to do it and I had the little rented carpet cleaner <laughs> the little carpet cleaner and I went in there in the hood in the dark cleaning of the carpet to make $50 profit after the rental and everything else I was just like I made money didn't make a lot of money but I made money I actually made a little money with the catalog business but after working all day working part-time and then hustling these catalogs all night I was a tired puppy then the janitorial thing was a little bit better I mean it was about that actually replaced my part-time job money because a cop I was making what 135 every two weeks yeah so that replaced that and you know back in the day that's when like 135 dollars paid like several bills you know this is how long ago it was and then business number six the contract office furniture business I made money from that business from day one and the reason it was I had went through the trials of Hades I made all of the freaking mistakes I could make and there were still more mistakes to be made but I had went through that vetting process then business number seven was the storage auction business and concurrently with the storage auction business there was a new furniture business which was business number eight business number nine was conundrum media and business number 10 the hustle university so that that is it so the first five were turkeys and when people come up and say what kept you going why didn't you stop I did not want to die not having tried my best and I knew business one through five I didn't try my best because one I was unprepared I was green I didn't have the right knowledge there was so many things that happened and I knew and that's why I keep telling you if you keep going you'll be successful I can't tell you when I'm not gonna blow smoke up your ass and say oh it'll be next year uh, some of you may take my journey of five or six years some of you may do it in a few weeks or months I don't know where you are I don't know what you're doing because when I look at Bella and check her out now origami I've talked about her she's the 14 year old girl who's now like 19 that started the business and did 250 million dollars in sales last year she had help I, I did a little research her mom was a developer dad was sales so when you get the proper training it just goes much much faster it just goes really really fast in terms of picking up what you want to do and making your business now the best thing is the early retirement Controlling your time is the wealthiest thing you can do. And why is this? Time you cannot replace. Today is August 20th, 2014. At 12 a.m. tonight, it goes away. It's never coming back. You'll get another Tuesday and you'll get another year and you'll get another August, but you're not going to get this one. My first book gave me the freedom to do nothing and I did not like it. <laughs> I'm going to read that again. My first book gave me the freedom to do nothing and I did not like it. Um, essentially, I retirement isn't what I thought it was going to be. Because essentially, when you're sitting around doing nothing, well, actually, I, I was helping my, my former partner because she had a lot of things to do. Um, it wasn't what I thought because we're taught you work hard you save all of this money and then hopefully when you're in your late 50s or maybe if you're real lucky your 40s you can sit around and do nothing and have money and time to do whatever you want to do I got to that point really really quick and I didn't like it because that's why I said I'll never retire because you know this to me is early retirement what I do now is early retirement because compared to the 
spying, gut-busting work I used to do. I used to do a lot of manual labor. When I was in the boarding house, I was working a labor-ready, labor force. I, I needed money, so I did whatever I had to do. And I looked at it different. So what having a business did for me is gave me early retirement and got me out of the rat race and the status quo of life. By controlling my time and my economy, I gave myself the option to live life on my terms, which is usually a place many people never arrive until retirement, if ever. Many of you know elderly relatives who are still working. They're 60-some, 70-some. They're still working because they have to. Because they have to. And I, one of my friends was talking to me the other night. And it was just like, I realize how fortunate I am. I don't take this for granted. Being able to go do stuff in the middle of the day, working out in the gym when there's nobody there. I don't take any of this stuff for granted because I know what the other side of life is. I know how hard it is out there. I know how many people are struggling. And when you start a business, once again, not to put some you know nice frosting on the cake, it can it will be challenging. But I believe the price is worth it. Based on all of the stuff I went through, uh, the broken marriage, living, being homeless, living with crackheads, going through all of that stuff gave me the resolve to be able to write books because I don't think I had the discipline level to do it back then. As a matter of fact, I don't even I don't have to say it. I know I didn't. But by going through that process of failing Let's just use the F word failing over and over and over and over. I don't know when it stopped hurting because <laughs> it hurt. I don't know when it stopped hurting. But I got to a point where, oh, that didn't work out. And I just kept going. And I hope that you can get to that point because you will start to realize some beautiful things in your life. I, I mean, it happened in the storage auction business. I would buy units that were just garbage, wouldn't make any money, and sometimes lost money. Uh, one of the biggest videos when everyone was going to the storage auction stuff was, you know, how I lost a thousand dollars to storage auction. Eight hundred bucks for the unit, two hundred bucks throwing it away, all down the drain. But a few weeks later, I got a jackpot unit that more than made up for it. More than made up for it. But by starting a business. You have to really, really improve yourself in many different areas. And just see, uh, I'm looking at the comments. It wasn't that bad, MK. Louis the Seller. My father is 71 and still has to work. This will not happen to me. I'm going to read that again. My father is 71 and still has to work. This will not happen to me. My mother... The most stable she was, was when she was in the home, she worked herself into bad health. And part of this is tribalism, where you're told that if you work hard, you keep your nose clean, you stay out of trouble, your life will be fine. I'm here to tell you that is not true. That is so untrue. It is crazy untrue. I mean, what can what is happening is amazing. I totally hear you, Louis. <laughs> I totally hear you. Because essentially what people don't realize is starting a business is not that complex regurgitating things that you were told changing your mindset rebuilding you improving your mental processes and learning how to be accountable learning how to be disciplined that's the hard part a business is providing a service or a product to someone that wants it to the point that they will pull out their wallet and give you those green things or run their credit card through your merchant account. That's it. The other stuff is what you have to work on. <laughs> that is the other stuff. So understand 
this is really some awesome times that we live in. These are incredible times that we live in. However, if you are not really focusing on this, and another thing I want to talk about is you can start businesses for an incredibly small amounts of money now. When I was looking at certain franchise, because I looked at it, a lot of stuff, I looked at you know, I did Janet King, I looked at I looked at Burger King, I looked at Mac. You needed, I mean, they weren't going to back in the day, they weren't going to talk to you unless you had a liquid net worth of 250,000. I think now you need seven figures before they would even talk to you. Um, you don't have to do that, and honestly, I don't think I would have another physical business that sells stuff. Unless, and I'm not going to say never, I own the building or I was in the process of buying the building. Because that's another lesson that I learned. One of the things that kills most stores is rent. They're not big enough to have the turn that they need. I mean, some of these little thousand square foot stores are paying 15, 15 20000 a month in rent because of the location. And they're not getting the turn to pay that rent or they're not selling the right products to pay that rent. And then that's another trap. They're in business to pay rent versus being in business to become wealthy. It, it, it is just amazing what happens when people just try. There was this company I used to work for that it was called Panel Systems. And I, I was talking to Scott, one of the founders. This is how this company got started. Scott worked for year one which was like a mustang parts distribution place and they needed to get some panels and he was in charge of getting the panels and he was just like totally shocked at the price of what these panels would be so he's like hey let me look for some used panels and he went out and found some and he found some panels that would meet their requirements and their only cost was to remove the, the panels and transport them where they needed them and have them put back up and he's like whoa he, he actually made money on the deal then next thing you know, he got in the business and he started going around and finding these panels and removing them and reselling them. And then they moved three times in the first two years. That's how fast their business grew. It's like, OK, we're doing this because, you know, it's I think they actually own their building now. But you need a lot of room for that stuff. And I don't know how the panel business or the furniture business is going because I'm not part of that anymore. Just like I really don't know what's going on with the storage auction business. I've been out of that business five years now. And it's funny to say that. It's been five years, five plus years that I've been out of that business. And another thing that if you didn't really get what I just said, once you learn elementary basic business skills, you can transfer them from business to business to business to business. That's why... If you just learn the basics and you learn them really well and you execute very well, you're not going to have to worry about money. And a lot of people can't say that because like uh, the lady I was talking to this morning, I know what her problem is, is she likes what she does on her terms. And with all of the accumulates of working for a high profile company, she were, uh, I mean, Napoleon said it. He was like, when would you start winning wars? When I found out that men would die for medals. Recognition. Recognition is one of the most powerful forms of currency there is. And there were people who will turn down millions to be recognized versus just part of the. I mean, seriously. Uh, I'm going to actually call this woman and talk to her because I have a feeling I can save her from herself. But essentially, when you are really really on that fence of am i going to do my own business you should really start because you can start small and you can free yourself and this is one of the reasons that i, I created hustler university uh this is one of the reasons i learned so much from that course 30 days to 2500 dollars. it was just sick what i learned it was amazing so with that you know, I'm just going to speed through this because the links will be below you. If you want 30 days to 2,500 bucks, you can get it. It teaches you how to start a business or how to improve your current business. 
and charter memberships for Hustlers University. Making your own economy. A lot of the things that I'm talking about here. And once again, this is not like the ticking time bomb like other stuff is because this is really much larger and this is a bigger deal. So I'm giving people way more time to get in on this. And I believe, ah, and I'm going to flip out of this. <laughs> it didn't go the way I wanted it to, but that's how I was going to end it. Uh, since I'm here, if anyone has a question, you can just go ahead and shoot and I will answer it. So I'm just put a little thank you. Thanks for everyone coming out. Okay, I'll be able to fix that. All right, so if there are no questions, uh, there's probably another one that's going to happen tomorrow. I haven't decided on the time. But if you're a member of Hustlers University or you're on the email list, you'll get it. It'll be something uh, really, really different. And I'm thinking about doing these chats at least once a week in this format because I like this much better than I like the Google Hangouts because I have, this is more, this is a tighter deal. It's a tighter product. And also, if you want to play around on your channel, I would say start playing around with this stuff now. Because not too many people are doing these events. They're doing the Google Hangouts. This is different. You have to download Wirecast for YouTube. It's free. They, they make it free for you. And play around with it. Because essentially, what this does, it gives you... Uh, the ability to run a production studio from your desktop. The Wirecast, like I said, you know, I didn't get the fancy brand because you can go up where you can have two or three different cameras. You can, There's all kinds of things that you can do. Like say, correct me if I'm wrong, if someone knows, but you could be, you could be in one room, right? Say you got a partner because uh, I was told that it's best to have this stuff hardwired let's see Chris hold on no Chris Larry has not contacted me nope <laughs> and that's a little different because the hustler magazine the is all uniformed and also the name isn't hustlers it's hustler university press so I don't have to worry about that copyright infringement deal put that in there but seriously I, I'm probably gonna do this you know one more time this week then at least once a week or it may expand because like I said next week everything kicks off and it's gonna be very very different uh, let's see Charlatan 19 how does having bought some of your courses already factor into the price great question that was covered in yesterday's video but I'll be real simple if you bought what I consider the beta testing, because this summer I was doing a lot of testing. If you notice that a lot of those things started off at $10 and that was a pre-sale price. And then I raised the price. If you came in at the $10 pre-sale price, I'll take the $10 off. So just email Amy, because you can go to tribe service, not tribe services, but tribe service at hustlersuniversity.org tell you tell her who you are she'll look it up and whatever courses you bought will knock off that price off of the main tuition if you bought 30 days to 2500 the full course and there was two levels there was a year course i um, will leave that at gumroad forever and forever have access and if you bought the lifetime membership which was 399 when i was offering it those people there's only a handful those people will be moved over to the new course. No additional charge. So hopefully that clears up those questions. And another thing is I'm doing these talks and talking about this because this is a big, big turn. This is a really, really big turn. And I know that I put out a lot of information. There was a lot of changes and I'm, I'm doing these talks. And like I said, 
I don't tomorrow. I've got four topics to pick from. That's why I'm not saying. And I'll, I'll continue to talk about this. So let's see. It's AKA Tony. So Tony, whatever courses you bought, just add them up and I'll deduct that from if you didn't, if you bought 30 days to 2,500, you're already, you know, situated with that either on Gumroad. If you bought the lifetime, you would be moving over. If you haven't, if you just bought the pre-sale courses, I'll just add them up and uh, we'll deduct that from what do you want? That's a better question. What exactly are you trying to get into? Also, let's talk about this. The deductions are only going to happen on a one-time payment. So if you do the one-time payment, I'll do the deductions. If you're going to do monthly payments, I'll still do the deductions, but I'm going to do them at the end since this is monthly. <laughs> so I will do those at the end, if that makes any sense. Uh, here's a question from Chris. If you've been beta testing, have you turned up any metrics on the profitabilities of products versus services? Oh, yes. Now, this is the thing. Both can be very profitable, but it just depends upon the service. It really depends on what people want. I mean, I'll just tell you straight up out of everything I did. The thing that worked the best for most people was 30 days to 2,500. That was that worked. That was it. Uh, here's young men. Will the old 2,500 get a price drop? Hold on. I hope the lights don't go out because <laughs> they're flickering. We just had some storms. Okay. Uh, will the old 2,500 get a price drop? Let me say that again. If you bought the first one for 199, cause that was for a year, then that stays in gum road. You have access to that forever and forever. If you bought the lifetime 30 days to 2,500, you will move over to the new Hustlers University. So that's the deal. If you didn't, because uh, I think a lot of people, I think that's the only thing they want is that. And I will tell you, there's a lot of stuff that's coming. And what I'm learning is, you know, going with 30 days to 2,500. For some people, the information was just coming way too fast. It, it was just too fast. It was overwhelming between running their business, uh, being a family person. It, it was just too much. So I've actually had to slow the pace down so people can get it and it'd be more effective. Also, some people need help. Some people need, I mean, when I say help, it's not even this big thing. It's just, okay, I don't really understand this concept. And can I like talk about it in a group setting for 10 minutes? Something like that. So those things will be on the table. And then, like I said, uh, when I do the publishing course, and I'm saving that to 2015 because publishing has changed so much. And one of the, the way that I do it, there's a lot of ways you can make money the way that I do it without Amazon or any of the other ones. Now, my books, the newer ones will be going there, but they'll be there in case someone wants to pick them up. Because when I do the marketing course, I'll talk deeply about that because much of this goes against the grain of what's out there because everyone is used to channels, don't work too hard, don't try to reinvent the wheel. And I want you to think about something. eBay was a different deal. Amazon was a bit different deal. All of these companies were something brand new experimental quirky whatever so sure you can not work as hard and make more money faster by using the channels and many people do it every day but imagine what will happen if you build your own channel there's this company i think it's alibaba i'm not saying it correctly but they're in china this guy jack ma i actually know the guy that was a founder of it they are going to be bigger than eBay and Amazon. And this is something I want you to really think about this. This was a company started in a communist country. They started this in the communist country. So it's going to be really, really huge. I mean, huge. And this is and it was maybe 10, 12 years ago. So when we do the creation course, we're going to talk about that because 
there's so many things that I want to put out, and I, I, I realize that I need to do a better job of presenting and structuring it and helping people be successful. And that's one of the reasons that I created this, because like it's like my whole goal was to write books, and this has turned into some much bigger and uh, more far reaching and actually very satisfying deal, much bigger than that. So, okay, it looks like that's the questions. And like I said, uh, if you're in the group, you can ask some more questions. I am going to shut this down because I need to go to the gym if I can get there because it's storming. And then we'll come back and work with some other stuff. All right. Once again, I want to say thanks to everybody that came out today, shared this hour with me. And I will see you on the good side. Now, this is another little thing you have to actually <laughs> it doesn't want to open up. This is funny. OK, here we go. You will probably be able to see this. You have to actually stop streaming for it to go. And with that, Arrivederci.